Yeah, because I'm gonna do this in English. Um, because why not? It's uh, it's a good practice. And uh, um, yeah, my name is uh, Eric, and uh, I'm an interaction designer uh, at Knowit Object Net. Uh, this is a picture of me using some crazy eye tracking software. And um, about a year ago, I was in the middle of write, hammering down my master thesis. This was me uh, hammering down uh, what would uh, end up being uh, the master thesis called Mobile Health Applications for Young Male Athletes. Uh, this, uh, this thing. Um, uh, so, just provide a uh, light and fast background. Um, when I mean uh, health apps, I mean mostly apps that track your activity during exercise, like uh, Strava or Runkeeper, uh, like apps talking to activity trackers, like Fitbit. Um, and my project was uh, for me to design a, uh, a health application together with young male athletes. Um, do, do anyone here use like uh, activity trackers? Or do you have an Apple Watch? You probably track your steps. A couple of engineers here. <laughs> um, but my goal today is not to present my thesis as a whole. I was, um, because I've been working uh, like looking back on uh, the thesis and uh, looking at it for the last couple of weeks and um, reflecting on how can I use what I learned a year back uh, today, how do I uh, apply that to my uh, daily work as a consultant. Um, so I'd rather give you a perspective on how to learn from users in every step of a design process. Um, and also have, uh, when preparing for this, I had um, like six, uh, I think, like aha moments that, uh, that I didn't realize while, uh, while writing, but um, afterwards I like, had a good um, benefit. Uh, and I thought this is good. And also, I want to give you a perspective of interaction design as a uh, science, because it is in uh, some ways a science, but it's not a science that, like, it's a science in a way that you have questions that you, uh, you have to answer, but there are several ways to, uh, to get one answer. Uh, it's not like math where you get one satisfying answer, um, but you have uh, uh, what you use to find the answer, you use quali uh, qualifiable tools instead of quantifiable tools to reach um, uh, to reach a conclusion that uh, often is uh, when a researcher subjectively interpret uh, research data. That's the kind of science uh, interaction design at a university level is. Um, so what kind of questions uh, does this produce and what kind of answers? And to be clear, I didn't do a, like a survey study. I didn't mail a bunch of people asking them if they used Strava or Runkeeper. Um, it was uh, a design study. And that means that we don't necessarily look at uh, the outcome of the design study, but we look at every part, every opportunity to uh, learn from designing and learning from the design itself um, and how it is perceived and also in this case in my masters uh, we created an app together so that's uh, a part of the science as well uh, and if you think that sounds kind of messy uh, it's because it is uh, it's uh, uh, every design process produces its own unique challenges and, um, and findings and outcome. Because if two different researchers use the exact same methods, um, you, you won't get the same result. Um, that's because 
so, uh, so what's the deal? Uh, that's because uh, one design does not fit all. Uh, and to give an easy example of that, if you ask someone who, what's the best smartphone, um, it's not one correct answer, simply because people are different. There's no objective answer. Um, so that's the level of complexity we have to deal with when uh, discussing this kind of science. Um, and uh, my ther uh, therefore, my uh, my study, my science, uh, my study does not claim to make the best design for all male young athletes, but it's rather a, a process of uh, discussing um, what we can learn from the tools we use and how to use them in different contexts and uh, make the most of uh, what we got as designers. Um, so why do a design study? Um, and as I said, the out outcome will differ depending on uh, who's the researcher, who's the participants, uh, the weather outside, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's the process we, uh, we use that we, uh, we learn and develop. And uh, um, one method in one context can be used in a different uh, context. And uh, yeah, you can learn from that. So I was part of a uh, design uh, a research group called uh, Kulu, uh, which um, yeah, which they had uh, participatory design. It's a methodology in uh, uh, for um, uh, it's a methodology that uh, is driven by the inclusion of users. Like many other design uh, methods are. Uh, user driven, but this is uh, you can interpret participatory design to be a, uh, a very strict every decision has to be used, uh, has to be made with the inclusion of users. Um, but that is rarely the case for either um, university students, students, or professors, or whatever you have. Um, yeah, like the focus on user p uh, participation, but it shouldn't be uh, completely led by the users. Um, and basically, it's a it's a framework on which we build our questions and perspectives. Um, and the key features of participatory design is, like I said, use, uh, user involvement and uh, mutual learning and co-creation. I think we'll come back to that, but those are two key features that um, that can be present in every design uh, process. But uh, this is like a benefit from that method. Um, yeah. So as a methodology, uh, the participatory design led me to my research question, um, which is how do young male athletes experience their bodies? in the context of design and use of health applications. Um, OK, so let's break that down to uh, talk about who is our young male athletes and um, how, uh, what is the context of design and use, because uh, that is the main, par uh, main parts um, that we focus on. So who are the participants? Um, and more specifically, how did I recruit people to a study that had no financial resources, uh, no uh, participants per se, or um, yeah, like no, uh, uh, I had nothing. So I have to get uh, the participants myself. Um, and I had to get out of my comfort zone. So I went to Olympia Toppen. Uh, and started talking to people, um, and I brought fruit to give them, but they uh, had already had all the fruit they needed because they're athletes, they eat fruit all the time, I learned. Um, so I brought power bars or energy bars to, um, 
to give them when I like uh, can answer some questions, uh, you'll get a power bar. Uh, um, and that, that became a thing. Uh, in each step of the design process, I had to like, uh, buy a lot of snacks because they, they eat a lot. And I figured that who else has a better reason to eat a lot of calories than athletes? They probably used it to just jump higher and run faster. Um, and the point here, uh, this is the first thing that I w went like, aha. Uh, I didn't realize this while doing it, but never miss the chance to learn from uh, the users. Uh, and also, uh, the point two is to get out of your comfort zone. Because uh, people t don't tend to grow in their comfort zone. Um, and also learned that uh, if, uh, if I want to approach and engage the athletes in my study, they had to, uh, they had to f uh, like feel that I uh, was properly involved. I, w I wanted to sell it to them instead of just, hey, um, you'll learn a lot. That doesn't work. You have to give them, give them something, give them something uh, fiscal or something to snack on. Um, so, uh, a lot of awkward conversations la later, uh, we had a group of uh, five athletes, uh, male athletes, ranging from the age of 20 to 25, um, which agreed to join my design process, uh, which I will come back to, but it was one interview and two workshops that they were uh, supposed to be a part of. Um, so here we are at the, what is the context of design and use? So they, um, uh, let me introduce the, the tools that in a chronological way, so it also reveals my process. Because, um, yeah, I'm gonna just go through this a bit fast. Um, because I used interviews as a groundwork for uh, discovering, okay, what, what, do I, what do I have here? I have a lot of athletes and they have experiences with these health applications, but I have to do interviews is a good way to do the groundwork um, before going into workshops and uh, like to pin out topics that you bring, bring with you. Um, so I uncovered if they, uh, some of them, like used uh, used health apps all the time, uh, actively in their uh, profession as athletes, and some of them didn't use it at all. <coughs> they were skeptical of uh, what it meant to their work. So both cases were represented. Um, so this led me to the future workshop, um, and this is where you. Uh, it's like Thea said that it's a, uh, it's kind of a meeting, but you as a designer have to kind of arrange everything and you have to prepare, right? So uh, a future workshop is where you have three phases. You first, uh, first critique a situation or a service or something that you, uh, the topic of conversation, you critique it. Uh, you find the, the missings and the shortcomings. And then you dream about the future. What can it look like if I get what I want, kind of. And then you find a realistic compromise. And I, I, uh, I have a perfect anecdote. Because me and, um, that's not perfect, but I'll go for it. Uh, me and my wife, have, uh, we have a car, uh, our sweet high and die gets. Uh, which I, I did this uh, recently that I critiqued the car for not being fast enough and cool enough. Um, and I explained to her that my dream car is uh, a Tesla. Uh, so that's what I want. Um, so that's the dream phase. And then we together worked, uh, worked uh, at finding a realistic approach to for me, one day being a Tesla owner, uh, and I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the three phases, and 
The danger here is the dream phase, because if you if you let the workshop get out of hand, um, this is where the an anecdote. Yeah, it's good. It's still good. Um, this is where um, if I said I'll just win the lottery and buy a Tesla, like that's the dream, but it's not really realistic. Uh, in the same way that I almost got my um, my athletes to like sidetrack the whole project by saying, okay, uh, I just uh, want a ship in my hand that uh, extracts all the health data from me and it sends it, sends it to my phone and uh, um, then the phone tells me what to do. That was kind of, uh, that could have been a dream scenario, but that's not really realistic yet. But um, as a researcher, what you have to do is, uh, and that's the third thing, um, I learned, don't, let, don't just let your workshop happen, uh, you have to lead it, so it doesn't get out of hand and you get kind of a win the lottery, chip in your hand kind of solutions. All right, so this led me to a uh, design workshop with the athletes, and this is where I wanted, wanted them to be actually a part of designing the, the contents of the, of the health app we were going to design. Um, and I made, uh, made some design el elements so they could like uh, figure out which content they wanted. And we also made a, a prototype using Sketch and Envision. Uh, and this is where the fourth uh, important thing I learned that content matters. Um, and this, I will come back to that in the findings um, because, yeah, it's important for the, to my findings. But this is also, um, this is what I made in, in Sketch while, uh, while making this with the participants. Uh, and what I learned, this is the fifth, uh, fifth thing that is important before I present findings, that uh, practice your tools and techniques. Um, for example, Sketch. Uh, you have to practice and when you think you master something in Sketch, you can master new things in Sketch. And when you think you are good at interviewing, you can find a new approach, a new angle to, um, to ask your uh, subject something. Uh, so all of this, um, b yeah. Quickly before I get into the findings, this was my uh, like what do you call it design uh, design process. Uh, it's called uh, yeah I won't go into that findings. That was the interesting part. Uh, so here I had to introduce quickly, very quickly, two theoretical concepts that were important for my findings, uh, and to give a short introduction. Um, there's, uh, there's a conflict between these two concepts, uh, and that's because self-quantification uh, is basically uh, telling us, hey, you could, uh, you could track, all, track more data. It's good. Track it. Come on, give it to me. And, um, and uh, they will use it uh, to give you feedback. And uh, life world, on the other hand, is more um, is more focused on. Okay, uh, you you are not the data that you give to your smart device or phone or uh, activity tracker. So they um, um, life world is more that you f uh, you feel what your body is and not what the phone tells you. And uh, that's as short as I can do it. Um, yeah. And what I discovered, um, this was, this is important for the, uh, the next part because the athletes kind of t uh, told me, uh, like through their, uh, through their responses and while making this app that, uh, design can be dehuman dehumanizing. 
um, that if you like you uh, the the human that the app portrays you as is not what you are. Um, so the data felt detached from the body it was uh, actually supposed to represent. Um, and this is speaking to the notions that, yeah, the users are not the data. Uh, and also designed for miscommunication, that this can happen if you, um, if the app tells them that they're better or worse than actually what they're feeling. Uh, this can be a danger. Uh, and designed for control. Uh, this relates to the first point uh, that we, as humans, own the data that we give the phone uh, or the the application, and not the not the application owning you per se. Uh, and this is uh, this is fun quotes that I, that I found in the, the thesis. That is uh, has three parts. I'll give them one by one. Um, and it's, your body is the ultimate interface problem. Sometimes it just doesn't give you the feedback you need. And this is the, la the last part. We create tight feedback, loop, uh, feedback loops that your body is missing to keep you healthy. Okay, so this is pointing to that the apps, app knows better than the human using it. And that's kind of dangerous. Uh, and this also leads to design for emotional attachments because you give them uh, personal data about yourself. Um, hmm, yeah, and you feel emotional while, while using uh, an app. Okay, so um, my conclusion was that there's something missing from the health apps that we need in order to bridge the gap between these two theoretical concepts. Um, mm. uh, and that this is where the design challenge uh, lies. And also the, uh, the participants agreed that this was uh, an issue that was very complex. Um, I think I'll go to the, the last, uh, last thing I learned while picking this uh, thesis up again, that design uh, decisions might have unseen effects, uh, especially if we don't include the users. How else should, uh, could we know that well, the, the data we give them, they might feel as uh, dehumanizing? Um, and also, uh, this is the last slide that uh, my professor gave me this. It's kind of a framework within participatory design uh, that uh, focus on how you relate to the user. And this is something I, when I thought about it, I, um, I want to use this in my everyday as a consultant. That when I, when I speak to the users of my applications, I am uh, the first point, situation-based action, that I go to them, uh, test it in the field, that they don't come to like a lab and test what I, what I made. Uh, and also having a say is important, that they feel that they are heard and uh, what they say actually reflects the, the final design. Uh, adaptability, um, like, don't don't waste the time of your uh, of your participants of the users and uh, be adaptable to where they are. Uh, respect their time, respect their life, respect their um, opinions. And lastly, uh, mutual learning. Uh, as I always said, that uh, it's a key feature in participatory design and a very powerful one. Um, because we can also educate the users as much as they educate us by just involving them. So, thanks.
på. Have you gotten to use this at uh, M tour? Participatory that is participatory design, yeah. No, I haven't. Not yet. Um, but I, the last slide, like, I do, um, I try to use like the uh, the charm framework for what I for whatever I do with the users. Um, I didn't say that, but participatory design in a, a pure form doesn't really exist in our consultant world because it's like too much um, user involvement, I think. Um, too expensive. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. Cool.